Hi everyone. Today we will discuss our lab on determining the equivalent mass of an unknown acid. The first thing I want to mention is that this is a solo lab, each student doing his or her own experiment. You need to know what goes on in here. Take plenty of notes while you're watching the video and rework the calculation on your own to make sure you can do it while in the lab. The lab report is collected at the end of lab, so you must complete everything. Let's get started. So there are two goals. First, you'll have to standardize an NaOH solution, and second, you'll determine the equivalent mass of an unknown acid with the standardized NaOH. Both of these goals are accomplished by titration. Let's discuss them in more detail. In part A, you'll carry out a standardization experiment. This is something you do when you're trying to determine the concentration of a solution. In this lab, you will do this by titrating an NaOH solution whose concentration is not known using an HCl solution whose concentration is known. When you get to the equivalence point, which is when the number of moles of acid and base are equal, you can do a fairly straightforward calculation to determine the concentration of NaOH. Let me first explain the calculation, and then we'll do an example. So the molecular equation of the reaction is shown here, where NaOH reacts with HCl to form water and NaCl. The net ionic equation, which shows only the species relevant to the reaction, contains only proton and hydroxide ion. The other species are just spectator ions. So how do we calculate the concentration of NaOH? We follow the steps shown here. Let's try it out with this sample data, which was collected when a standardization experiment was done using 0.1076 molar HCl. The student did the experiment three times and recorded the data. This is what you will do as well. Note that a back titration is done in trial three. What's a back titration? This is when you overshoot the endpoint of the titration, which is shown in the picture. That means you've added too much NaOH. You can go back to your endpoint by adding a small amount of HCl, which is what the student did here. So let's show how the calculation is done for trial one. First, we calculate the volume of HCl, which is just subtracting final minus initial volume of HCl, giving us 22.25 milliliter. We do the same thing with NaOH, we get 20.15 milliliter. We can calculate the number of moles of NaOH. We do this by getting the number of moles of HCl, which is done through multiplying the volume of HCl, 22.25 milliliter, by its concentration, which is 0 0.1076 molar. And then we do one step of stoichiometry between NaOH and HCl, and now we get the number of moles of NaOH as 2.3941 millimoles. The milli prefix is still around. Note that I'm rounding my answer at the end, but I'm keeping track here of my sig fig. Last step, I calculate my concentration of NaOH by taking the number of moles of the NaOH divided by its volume, giving me 0.1188 for NaOH in trial 1. If I repeat this steps for trial 2 and 3, I would get 0.1212 and 0.1187 molar for 2 and 3 respectively. Now, I want to remind you again that there's a back titration for trial 3. In terms of calculation, this will not be too complicated. You will take the second final reading of your HCl, which is this number right here, to be your final volume, and that's all. Once you calculate the concentration of NaOH for all three trials, what you need to do is find two of the trials that are within 1% of each other. It's pretty obvious that trial 1 and trial 3 fits this category, so those are the two numbers that we will use to calculate our average NaOH concentration. The average Average ends up being 0.1188 molar with the correct sig fig, and then you can calculate the percent difference from the average, which is done by taking the absolute value of the difference between the average and the experiment divided by the average times 100%. Okay, now that we have our standardized NaOH, we're ready to go to part B. Note that, as I said earlier, the net ionic equation of this acid base reaction is proton plus hydroxide goes to water. So, what this equation what the equation tells us is that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between proton and hydroxide. What that means is, let's say we have two moles of hydroxide in our titration, that also means that we have titrated two moles of protons. Now, one of the issues with this is that knowing the number of moles of protons doesn't immediately tell us the number of moles of acid, because we first need to know how many protons the acid produces. So in the example I just said, which is two moles of proton, the number of 
of moles of acid will depend on whether it's mono or diprotic. If it's monoprotic, that means that two moles of the acid will generate two moles of proton because there's a one-to-one -one relationship between acid and proton. If the acid is diprotic, which remember means that one acid produces two protons, then you're going to only need one mole of acid to generate two moles of proton. So in this experiment, you won't know whether the acid is mono, di, or triprotic. So that means you won't know the number of moles of your acid. As a result, you can't calculate the molar mass of your unknown acid. Why? Well, this is because molar mass is the ratio of mass of acid to number of moles of acid. Because we don't have number of moles of acid, we can't get our molar mass. However, we can calculate a related quantity called the equivalent mass, which is just a ratio of mass of acid to number of moles of proton. Notice that the equivalent mass can be converted to molar mass if we know how many protons the acid produces as shown in this equation right here. Okay, let's now work through an example of calculating equivalent mass from your titration data. So here, a student had gotten his NaOH standardized to 0 0.1068 molar then use that to titrate his unknown acid three times. In trial two, he was forced to do a back titration using 0 0.1076 molar HCl. So let's see how we can get the equivalent mass for trial one. Remember that equivalent mass is just the mass of acid divided by the number of moles of protons. To get the mass of acid, we just subtract the first two numbers on this table, giving us 0.415 gram acid. To get the number of moles of proton, we first need to get the volume of NaOH that we use, which is 18.18 milliliter, and then we multiply that volume by the concentration of the standardized NaOH, and then use stoichiometry to relate that to H plus or proton, and then giving us 1.941624 times 10 to the power of minus 3 moles of H plus. Again, here I'm indicating where my sig fig should end. To get the equivalent mass, I divide my mass by the number of moles of the protons, giving me 214 grams of acid per mole of H+. For trial two, it's a bit more complicated because there's a back titration. Basically, you're going to start with the same two numbers, the mass of acid and the number of moles of proton from the NaOH titration. But then, you're going to have to calculate the number of moles of proton from the HCl back titration, which you can do here by multiplying the volume times the concentration of the HCl. Then, to get the actual number of proton titrated with NaOH to the endpoint, you will subtract the number of moles calculated in step 1 minus the one from step 2. The equivalent mass, again, is just the mass of the acid divided by the number of moles of H plus that you got here, giving you 212 gram of acid per mole of H plus. Lastly, if you repeat this calculation for trial 3, you're going to get 209 grams of acid per mole of H plus. Now, if you average all those three numbers right here, here, and here, you're going to get 211 grams of acid per mole of H plus. Now, this is where you will stop in your lab report, but let's say I tell you that your acid is diprotic. Now, you can actually go ahead and calculate the actual molar mass of the acid. Remember, to do that, you just need to take the equivalent mass of the acid, multiply by the number of protons that the acid produces. So in this case, 211 gram of acid per mole of H plus is the average equivalent mass. And then you multiply that by two moles of H plus per mole of acid, since it's diprotic acid, giving you 422 gram of acid per mole of acid now. Okay, in video two, we're going to go on and discuss the actual experimental steps you're going to need to do in lab.